Okay, this is how to do the first mechanics problem on the 1982 version of the AP Physics C exam. It is a pretty easy problem, uh, and it begins as such. A 20 kilogram mass released from rest slides 6 meters down a frictionless plane inclined at an angle of 30 degrees at the horizontal, and strikes a spring of spring constant K equals 200 newtons per meter, as shown in... The diagram above, uh, assume that the spring is ideal, that the mass of the spring is negligible, and the mechanical energy is conserved. Part A. Determine the speed of the block just before it hits the spring. Usually with springs, conservation of energy equations should be used. And in this case, we know that no energy will be lost to heat because the incline is frictionless. The total amount of energy that the block has initially will equal the amount of energy it has finally, before it hits the spring. Now, initially, the stationary block has no kinetic energy because it's not in motion. Instead, it has potential energy, which is equal to the product of its mass, its height, and gravity. Mass and gravity are given, but we must calculate h. First, we must establish where we measure the block's position from, how high it is relative to a set point. For part a, because we only care about the block as it falls to the spring, the baseline position will be the top of the spring. This means that at the spring, the block's height is zero, and the initial height is how high the block is above the zero point. To find the height of the block, basic trig is used. The top of the triangle is the block's position, while the incline's base is the zero point. The six meter distance between block and spring is given. Sine of 30 degrees equals the height over the six meter incline distance. Sine of 30 degrees equals one half. So 1 half times 6 equals h, which equals 3 meters. Conservation of energy tells us that the block will always have this much energy. And so at this point, all the block's energy will be kinetic because the block's height is 0 relative to the bottom position. That is, PE equals 0. Kinetic energy equals 1 half mass times velocity squared. Because no energy is lost to friction, potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final, or mgh equals one-half mv squared. Canceling out the m's and substituting in 10 for g is given, h is 3 meters, and solving for v, we get v equals the square root of 60 meters per second. That was part A. Part B is to determine the distance the spring has been compressed when the block comes to rest. Again, for Part B, energy equations will be used. A thorough understanding of these equations is vital to AP success as it allows you to determine how to solve a problem based on the variable you are solving for. Because we are solving for compression distance, the equation work equals 1 half kx squared should be used where k equals the spring constant and x equals the compression distance of the spring. Work is measured in joules and is thus compatible with the energy equations. Again, we must set a point where h equals zero. For part b, this will be at the final point of the spring's compression. Our setup looks like the diagram shown, where x meters is the compression distance and at the base of that compression, h equals zero. This prevents us from making a common mistake, which is to use the previous three meter height instead of the height to the x compression distance. Shown more simply here by using the x and six meter incline distance instead of simply the six meters from part a. We can then find that the initial height of the block is equal to the sine of 30 times the x compression distance plus 6 meters. Because the block is at rest at the point of spring compression, there is no final kinetic energy. Instead, all the initial potential energy works on the spring. So, mgh equals 1 half kx squared where 20 kilograms equals m, g equals 9.8 meters per second squared, h was as shown as sine of 30 degrees times x plus 6 meters, k is 200 newtons per meter, 
and x squared is going to be solved for in meters. Never mind, g equals 10 meters per second squared. Then with some algebra, we find that x equals 3 meters. The compression distance cannot equal negative 2 meters, otherwise it would be elongated, which did not happen in this case. So part for the answer for part b, x compression distance equals 3 meters. And finally, part C. Is the speed of the block a maximum at the instant the block strikes the spring? I will justify. Thinking back to kinematics, the downward speed would be maximized when the block no longer accelerates downward, or when the net force is zero. To find when the net force is zero, we construct an FBD at the point of contact with the spring. We know that we are concerned with the parallel component of gravity as shown. With similar triangles, right triangle trig in algebra, we know that Fg parallel equals Mg times the sine of 30 degrees. This gets us the component of gravity that acts in the downward direction parallel to the incline and will be directly opposed by the spring's force. The force that the spring will exert on the block is equal to k, the spring constant, times x, the compression distance of the spring. Using the FBD then, we know that the spring force will oppose the downward force of gravity that works parallel to the incline. And when they are equal, there will be a net force, uh, and the block will no longer accelerate downward. So at that point, it will have a maximum speed. This relationship can be rewritten as mg sine of 30 degrees equals kx. What this implies is that the upward spring force varies directly with the spring's compression. So as the spring compresses further, the force will be greater in the upward direction until the block accelerates upward. Thus, the block is at its maximum speed at the compression distance where the force of the spring just equals the force of gravity parallel. By substituting in the values and then using algebra, we find that x equals one half meter because the force of the spring and compression are directly related, the block will be able to accelerate downward until the spring is compressed enough, one half meter. Thus, the point of contact for the spring and block is not the block's maximum speed, because the, the force of the spring does not yet equal force of gravity parallel. Thank you. This problem has been brought to you by Zach Cohen. Uh, you're welcome.